Hello, I'm Pearl of Wisdom and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And the first thing I want to talk about is the Kachuk contract, but we're going to look at, I have The Athletic, and they did a poll to see the top 32 goaltenders in the league ranked. Every team's goaltenders ranked from 32 to 1. And I'm going to do a reaction video on it. I haven't even really, I haven't even looked at it. I'm going to go like pure, just... Whoa, what? I don't agree. You don't agree. Tell me what you think about it. But first of all, the Kachuk contract. Uh, and um, be sure to come in. We talked about this all day on the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. And if you subscribe to the channel, guess what? You can too. So yeah, have fun, man. The frolic is amazing. Amazing frolic. I'll tell you, there will be frolic. And when I say there will be frolic, that's what I say. <laughs> I even put a shirt just in case I forget, there will be frolic. I put it on a shirt. Actually, my, my daughter gave me this. Pearl of Wisdom show. She kind of did a thing here. It didn't really work out, but it's a Pearl of Wisdom show. Anyways, Kachuk contract. Beautiful. I think it's a beautiful contract for both. I think Kachuk's going to outplay that contract. And people say, well, he, he didn't. He only had 45 points. Did you see the teams he was playing on? A 19-year-old getting 45 points on those teams? I say that's a pretty special kid, man. Not to mention, the guy brings unbelievable amounts of competitiveness to a team. Guys with his spirit win cups. Almost assuredly, there's a cup in that guy's future. Okay? And uh, you just can't pass that up. So they haggled for a long time. Seven years, $8.2 million. Um Probably, I would have liked to have gone eight. He wouldn't go eight. I'd say Ottawa kind of won the deal a little bit if just getting it even for seven because he only wanted to go like four or five. So, uh, but I think it's good for everybody. As long as he wants to stay in Ottawa, and yeah, I was, there was concerns whether he was going to stay in Ottawa or if he wanted to play with his brother and all that kind of stuff like that. So I'd say good job. Excellent contract for both. Chuck makes a good chunk of money probably will play play over that contract uh in like two years if not even sooner but um gets to stay in ottawa and become a legend there in ottawa it's going to be awesome to see all right let's go look at this freaking awesome uh 32 goaltender rankings i really like this i thought you would too first one Aaron Dell of the Buffalo Sabres, it actually, I don't know why they were saying Aaron Dell here. I don't know what they thought Aaron Dell was going to be. I guess because um, Anderson's 40 years old, they must have figured. They, they even said it in the article that they made a mistake, uh, that he, uh, they made a mistake that he would be, they just thought because he was younger, he would play. But next, Arizona Coyotes at, with Carter Hutton. And that that's funny thing is here is this was Carter uh, Car about goaltender for Buffalo last year. Um, I'd actually put Carter Hutton as the worst. And I'm watching right now, and they're they're winning. Uh, they are uh, losing three nothing already to um, Columbus, and they're out shooting Columbus. Carter Hutton's really bad. Sorry, Arizona fans, but it's good. It's a good thing. Because you all know in Arizona that what needs to happen is you lose. You got to lose. You got to get its uh, fight for for right, right? Shane Wright. Or not fight. I guess not fight for right. <laughs> uh, that's what you got to do. So it works out. But, yeah, he's a pretty poor goaltender the last couple of years. Uh, Aiden Hill. Uh, Aiden Hill never played more than 19 games in the NHL. Uh, he hasn't got a really good opportunity in his career, as it says here. Um, but he has the size and he has the skill. I think he's going to play himself above this. I understand putting him number 30 in the league uh, because he's uh, he just hasn't did anything yet. And he's actually kind of an older goaltender. Do they have his age here? I, I didn't. Not a fan at all, a former goalie said. San Jose's goaltending is a train wreck. 
Um, we'll see. I, I don't. I, I don't. I think uh, Nabokov is a pretty smart dude. Yeah, he's a goaltending coach for San Jose, and he kind of Aiden Hill kind of reminds me of Smith in Edmonton. So he's got that kind of style. So whoever said here that it was not, they didn't mention a name. Not really a fan. Maybe that's why, because Smith is difficult to watch as a goaltender. But he stops pucks. And Aiden Hell kind of reminds me of a guy like that. Next, what do we got? Matt Murray at 29. Wow. I guess you kind of, I mean, he did win a cup. But his last couple of years in, in Pittsburgh and Ottawa have not been good at all. So... I'm uh, I'm I'm um, I'm gonna say that he could be lower. Actually, it's been that bad. Look at his lowest tier rating. Okay, his highest tier rating was 2017. They have that too, but he's just had terrible, terrible plus minus uh, or plus minus uh, goals against average and save percentages for the last three years. There's really, really big gaping holes in this game. And unless that is fixed, he'll be a five for me next year, for a former goalie said. This was done by people that played in the game and all that. That's why I like the athletic. These people know what they're talking about as well. Um, but I even think that he seems high, but because he won a cup, I mean, he did have good years. I guess I can see why you put him there. Uh, but he's really bad. Hudobin. It's just weird because Hudobin brought Dallas to a cup, what, not two, three years ago? But um, the problem has been, listen, great story, works hard, does a lot of good things, but I think he's still better suited as a backup. Where can you play him 35 games if he wants to be a starter? But is he a true number one? No. I, I kind of have to agree with that. He wears down if you play him too much. He wants to play a lot. He's a gamer. He's got heart. And if he goes on a run like he did that year, what was it, two years ago for Dallas, he can do stuff. But is he in the regular season, is he going to be a true number one for you? Not really. When, whenever, that's, whenever they tried to do that, he wore down and they ended up having to play the backup a lot more. So I get that. I get that. But let's see who else is up here. Tristan Jari. Okay. He had a really bad year last year. Um, he shows all the signs of being a really – this is what I was going to just say. He shows all the signs of being a really solid, capable goaltender. Uh, but he just lost it in the playoffs last year. I, I still believe in Tristan Jari. I believe he'll come back and he'll be okay. He, he, he just had a really bad year. Um, I saw him a lot for the Edmonton Oil Kings, the junior team, a uh, junior team, and I live in Edmonton here. And I was like, that's going to be an NHLer for sure. I didn't know backup or starter or whatever, but I thought NHLer for sure. Um, if he doesn't come back, though, it's scary. And I can understand why. You, it was such a bad playoffs that you really can't put him high. He just crushed his ranking, and it makes sense that he would be down here for sure. Uh, Mike Smith, I was just talking about, that Hill reminds me of Mike Smith. And I, I, I'm thinking this might be low. As we go up, maybe it's just bias because I've always been a huge Mike Smith fan. I, I think when he was in Arizona, I know his numbers weren't spectacular, but that those teams were really bad. And if you watched him, he stopped a lot of pucks. The guy just stops pucks. He doesn't look pretty doing it, but he stops pucks like crazy. So um, I, have, I imagine I'm going to think this is too low. We'll see as we go down here. But he's 38 years old. Um, and I think he's just getting a lot of flack here because he's, he's that old and they just think he's going to cave. Uh, I know that he just played a game in Vancouver where he was the reason why they won, though. So he just keeps on going. Guy's a warrior. I love him. I love warrior goaltenders like him. Uh, Jack Campbell at 25. See, now I would put Smith above Jack Campbell. Uh, he's done it. One or two year. Uh, last year he had a good year. This is the op. Last year he had a good year. Smith had a good year last year. Smith had a great year last year. He has a terrible defense in front of him. So does Campbell though. 
He's a type that can look good in stretches, but I don't see him as being able to handle a number one spot. And I agree. And Smith has. So why would Smith be below Campbell? Smith has handled the number one spot in his career lots. And he handled it well last year. So I don't understand why Smith is below Campbell here at all. He's he's a nice guy and all that kind of stuff like that. Um yeah, I, I think he, 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 while he was really good in stretches last year, he won 10, 10 games in a row. But as a whole, he has never been able to prove. Let's say it. You can say you don't think he can be a number one, but he is now 29 or 30 years old, something like that. Um, I'm doing this off the top of my head, so I'm not going to cap friendly to find out the facts. But he's been... Uh, He's never been able to be a number one goaltender. He was a high draft pick. He worked, had struggled with his confidence in Dallas. I'm doing this off. And then he went to LA and he worked himself up into a backup. He was like a late blooming goaltending goaltender. He had he started playing really well in LA and Toronto gave him a shot. He could be a late bloomer guy that is a true number one, but we have no reason to believe so up until now. So I, I don't agree with the ranking. I think Smith should be higher here. So we'll see who's next. See if I would put Smith up here anywhere. Uh, Sergei Bobrovsky at 24. And uh, this is tough. I get it. He's won two, what, two Vesnas. So you got to put him. Uh, he's just been so bad the last couple of years. So they're talking. No, no goalie has taken a bigger turn for the worse in, his goal, in the goaltending tiers than Bobrovsky. Exactly. Uh, he has just been absolutely awful the last two years. I have a hard time putting him here. I guess they must be taking career in career uh, his career in uh, account because I honestly think he should be down again below Smith and below Campbell. He's been terrible, like terrible. So I would I would even put him lower myself. Uh, Linus Allmark. I get it. He hasn't did it. He's also a late blooming goaltender. He's like 27, 28. Showed awesome in Buffalo the last two years. But um, would I put him as a number? Would I put him higher than 23? I'll find out. But I'll tell you what, the last two years he was really, really good. And I think he's going to show well in Boston this year. I, I really do. So, um I give him that. Sorry, I'm watching the games at the same time as I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> um, I'll give him. A, I understand why he's low though, because he hasn't did it. It's not his fault. I don't think. I think if he wasn't in Buffalo, he would probably show higher here. But he is in Buffalo, so. Uh, Ilya Samsonov. Now, he has capabilities and potential. This is what one of the people said. Uh, that 22. But I think Carter Hart has shown more than, than Samsonov. Uh, he has some decent stretches. He has great physical abilities. But he's I, I, I have a feeling he's not going to make it. And I don't know if I, I'm comfortable put him here, putting him here. Uh, he was injured most of the year last year. So it, it's... He's right in the area. You could put him a little higher, a little lower, but because he does show signs of being a really good – he's tantalizing. That's the word I'm looking for. He's a tantalizing goaltender with the skill level, but he hasn't mentally been able to put it together. So, Next, uh, Cal Peterson. I think this is low. This is – if you go by – if you go by his numbers, he's a battler. He's got a bit of cockiness to his game, as it shows here. Uh, but he's uh, – just, Carolina just scored, screwing up my parlay. <laughs> um, you were never sure about him. I like him a lot, a lot, a lot. And others disagree. And there's people that are on both sides of the fence of Cal Peterson. Probably why he's in the middle here. I think if you got Sam Sohn off at 22, we probably got Cal Peterson too low here. Uh, that's what I think. 
But again, you're going on pure ability. This guy stops a lot of pucks and he stops them in ways that are confident and sure. And he plays for a bad LA team that hasn't really learned how to play around him yet. So we'll see. See if I'm wrong. Nadelkovic at 20, I would put Nadelkovic lower than 20. 20. Uh, and we're going to find that out in Detroit. This is another example of putting a guy somewhere because of the team he plays in front of him. I, I just don't think that... Um, I just don't think that uh, the team that played him, the team that played in front of him in Carolina makes goaltenders look really, really good, and I don't think he's going to see that in Detroit. Um, he's a battler, but he's got a lot of holes in this game. He's the best puck handling goaltender in the game. Okay, I still say Smith. What about Smith? Uh, I think it's possible he becomes a good starter. And I, I think that's it, true. I don't think he's going to be a great starter. I think he could be a good starter. I think if you put Peterson in Carolina, wow, I, you'd be better off. So I got to put Peterson ahead of Nadelkovich. Next, uh, Mackenzie Blackwood. Yeah, tough. You got to kind of put him here. He When he's, all, when he's healthy and go, ready to go, good to go, he is an absolutely fantastic um, goaltender, but it's just the injuries have been really the problem. Um, technically solid. Uh, yeah, he's also had a very poor defense in front of him in New Jersey. Again, if you put Mackenzie Blackwood in Carolina with that defense, he'd be way higher here. Uh, it's funny with Tommy in New Jersey. He keeps giving me indications that they're not sold on him as I am. Uh, he's talking about Tom Fitzgerald. Now, I really love him. I think they're just being very careful with him. And I will see if I see him higher here. But I certainly... Robin Lehner at 18. Yeah. Robin Lehner has just been... Had a lot of problems in his life. But uh, with his mental health and stuff like that. But he's sloppy. He gives up rebounds totally. That's the thing. Uh, but the thing about it is he stops. He stops it anyways. He's one of those guys that doesn't have kind of like what we were talking about with Hill and Smith. They, you know, goaltender coaches or people that are looking for technically solid goaltenders. Laner is not it and probably will never be it, but he'll stop pucks like crazy. I don't see, I don't like him as a goalie. Wow. I would not go that far. But obviously, there's people that are very high on him. And he'll probably prove everybody wrong this year. He just needed to get on a team that was going to let him be who he is. And that was tough. He's a different dude. There's no doubt about that. And if you rub against that and don't let him be who he is, he will uh, not do well. But I, I think in Vegas, he found the perfect spot for himself. And I think he's going to do really well. Uh, Carter Hart, yeah, you got to. I'd, I'd almost put him lower after the year he had last year. Uh, I don't think I'd put him ahead of Laner. I'd put Laner ahead of him. I would put Peterson ahead of him. Uh, me, well, I would have put Nedeljkovic lower. Yeah, I would have put him a couple lower. It was that bad of a year last year for him. Do I think he's going to rebound? But sure. But I do think he's going to rebound, but he's got to rebound. Um, it just hasn't been pretty for him in uh, in Philadelphia last year. It was, it was not good. Uh, I don't see the quickness that Shesterkin or Vasilevsky has. Yeah, I didn't see anything. I Seriously, if that was his first year, I'd be like, this guy's never going to make it. He's got a lot of potential. And... Ron Hextall said he didn't want him to play. He knew something about his maturity. Ron Hextall is, you know, one of the best goaltenders in Philadelphia's Flyers history. I think they probably should have went with what Ron Hextall did, and I do believe they should have stuck with what he was doing as well. And it looks like he might have been right, but we'll see how he does not this year. But that was such a bad year last year. It was terrible. Um, Frederick Anderson. 
Yeah, I, I, I think you got to put him – when he's perfectly healthy, there was years in Toronto, he was just a beast. Um, it's just the health. So he, he gets knocked down because of health. Makes sense. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Uh, we'll see what he, in Carolina, he could be an, like, if he, as long as he's not injured, this could be, it could have been one unbelievable move for Carolina getting, and they're beating the Islanders 4 2 as we speak and out shooting them, oh my gosh, a crazy amount. So, wow. Uh, I had the Islanders PL in a parlay here. It doesn't look like it's going to come through. <laughs> um, Minnesota Wild, Tim, Cam Talbot, nice to see him up here. But it's his last couple of years, and it's his last. It's kind of last year. I don't know if you should put him ahead of Laner. Really, if you're talking about pure talent, what are they putting him up there for? Makes the saves you need him to make. Yeah, he's just solid. Um, he's not spectacular, but he's solid. Once you get him moving a little and scrambling, scrambling, you can expose him. I think Talbot's got to go lower here. I, I would put he if you look at his whole career, he had really one good year last year, um, and everybody loves Cam Talbot. That's the thing. He's one of the greatest people you're ever going to meet, and that I think gets him a lot more than he really deserves as far as his actual goaltending is concerned. So I would put Frederick Anderson. I would have put Frederick Anderson ahead of him. I would have put. Laner ahead of him. Um, I would have put probably Mackenzie Blackwood ahead of him for pure talent. Uh, and then just ahead of Carter Hart. So uh, I like Talbot, but he had a great team in front of him last year. He did really well. I am, We'll see how he does this year. But overall, his whole talent level for his, or his whole career has been very up and down. So it's, I think it's a little generous to have him this high. Elvis Merzlikens, this is on just pure talent. They're doing this on pure talent because um, he uh, he hasn't really put up the numbers there in Columbus. But on pure talent, I can understand why this. He's a star in the making, yeah. Uh, no doubt about that. More consistency. I think you're going to see that this year. I think he's going to crush it in Columbus this year. I've been saying that I think Columbus is going to surprise more than people think this year. And uh, Elvis Merzlikens is part of the reason. I get this. I totally get this. Um, that, on the other hand, though, he uh, also was doing this under a Tortorella system that tends to make goaltenders look really good. So is he making the goaltender look really good? We'll see. We'll see. Jordan Bennington, I think this is too high. Sorry. Uh, he, 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 he had a good cup run. I mean, lots of goaltenders have a good cup run. Overall, I think he's been pretty up and down. Uh, he's got all the talent in the world. I'm not sold as everyone else is. Yeah, I guess that's me, whoever was saying this. You win a cup before you really get a legitimate starter in the league. Then you get paid. You got to go out and earn it. A former goaltender said, and I agree. I think he's way too high here. I'd have him. I'd have him. Oh my gosh! I'd have Laner. I'd have Anderson ahead of him. I'd even have Carter Hart ahead of him. Maybe Robin Laner for sure. Blackwood for sure. I'm, he's way down there. Maybe just ahead of. I had Mildelkovich lower. Uh, Cal Peterson. Cal Peterson, I still I would have had above Talbot, where they have Talbot here. I would have probably had him somewhere around Robin Lehner. Yeah, this I don't like that at all. I don't agree with that at all. So, tell me what you guys think there. I'll be sending this out to St. Louis, but I don't agree with that. It's too high. Uh, Philip Grubauer, no. I was waiting to see this go. No, Philip Grubauer is way down. He had a great year. He's a reactionary goaltender who was playing in front of an amazing defense. I, I don't think he's got exceptional ability, but he grinds and he works and he does the needs to keep, keep his team in the game. Per, yeah, exactly. And that's not going to work in Seattle as much. I'll tell you. I doubt that very much is going to work in Seattle as much as it did. He got lucky. 
in a way because he got he was in Washington during the Barry Trotz years, and you know that system makes a goaltender look good. And then he goes to Colorado where they have the best defense in the league. We're going to find out in Seattle. We'll see if I'm right, but I would have him way down, way down in like below Carter Hart. Because Carter Hart's got the pure talent. Grubauer doesn't. He's got a cup. He was a backup when he got the cup and stuff like that. But And he almost won a Norris last year, and I'm saying all this. So you're pro- I'm probably going to get slammed for what I just said, but I'd have him way down. Uh, Jacob Markstrom, what's going on here, guys? Seriously now? Jacob Markstrom is a good goaltender. He's like Talbot. I think he's a good goaltender. Moves well. Very much consistency issues with him. Absolutely. I, why the heck is he so high? I, I've i got Laner ahead of him. Merzlikens for his pure talent. Uh, I think Merzlikens got, has got more pure talent than he does. Uh but the same kind of consistency, yeah, I'd have I, – I, I, I think Calgary made a mistake giving him that money. He really only had one excellent year, and they gave him the $6 million. I don't get why they have Markstrom so high. Sorry, guys. I just don't see it. Uh, Sergey Semyon Varlamov, he's done really well the last couple of years, and but he struggled in Colorado most of his career. Again, he goes to a Barry Trotz coach system. He says Varlamov has performed in a high level for a long time. When he was in Colorado, he struggled lots. Again, lower, 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 lower. Let me put it this way. If you ask me, do you want Laner or Varlamov, I would have took Laner. And they had that chance. But they ended up taking Varlamov, I think, because he can help that young Sorokin kid out in uh, – that young Sorokin kid out in uh, on, on the island because they're both Russian and – Laner is difficult. Is a different dude, so I think that's why. But I would take Laner over him. Uh, would I take Markstrom over him? No, I would have Markstrom lower. I'd have him above Markstrom. I'd have him above Gruba or below. Yeah, above Grubauer. Uh, about Jordan Bennington, somewhere around there. Because I think if Bennington was in an Islander system, he'd be about the same. So. Of course, most goaltenders would. Uh, Thatcher Demko, love that. Yes, absolutely. Pure talent. The guy is a beast. If Vancouver has a chance in the next little while, he's why. Because their defense is terrible. And he's going to save a lot of games for them. I love, 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 love. I see why they have him nine because he hasn't really proven all that much yet. But he will. He's going to be incredible. For pure talent, I might end up putting higher. I certainly have him above a lot of the guys that I have here. I, 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 don't, I don't mind him in the nine spot at all. Very good. UC Saros, I totally get this. He's, he was just absolutely insane last year. Um, but, again, it was really only one year, and he, it took him a long time to get to where he is. So I would put Demko ahead of him, actually. I think Demko ultimately will be a better goaltender than him. He manages the crease well. He's got a gear, great glove hand. Yeah, he does. He's his for a, re, a reactionary smaller goaltender. He is lights out, no doubt about it. Darcy Kemper, I can tell you already, is too low. Just wait till you see what Darcy Kemper does. If you think Grubauer is amazing uh, or great, Darcy Kemper with that defense in front of him is going to be disgusting. It's, <laughs> it's going to be unbelievable how well he does there. I think he's too low. Of course, because he was in Arizona, he hasn't had an opportunity to get any hardware or anything like that, and I think that's why he is. He has all the qualities of a true number one. Yeah, I would say so. He he was hampered by some injuries. I guess that puts him a little lower. But let's see who. Shesterkin. Okay, I get it. I mean, Shesterkin is incredible. He is incredible. Uh uh, yeah, but I would put Kemper and Shesterkin in the same realm. So I, I guess I like where they are right now. Uh, he, But he hasn't proved anything either. So would I put Demko and 
Shesterkin together? Yes. Maybe even Demko better. He may be even a little better, but on the same plane. I, I totally... John Gibson, yeah, okay, now we're getting to rare air stuff. But he's had a bad couple years, so... But let, let's face it, I mean, when the, he is amazing. He's amazing. It's, it's not really bad years. His team has just played absolutely god-awful in front of him. But it's good that they recognize... And these are great. This is the athletic. I mean, they know what they're talking about. For sure, I put him up here, no doubt about it. Carey Price... I guess you gotta. Is he? He's, he had the great run last year. When he's at his best, he's one of the best, maybe the best. It's just he hasn't been the best a lot in the regular season. I'd almost put Gibson ahead of him because Gibson has been had a bad defense in front of him and still had amazing nights where Carey Price has really struggled. What did they say about him? I still think he's one of the very best in the league. In other words, they have to say, I still think, because he has been so inconsistent the last couple of years. I think this is a name placement. I probably wouldn't put – I'd put Kemper ahead of him. I would put Kemper ahead of Price right now, for sure. Marc-Andre Fleury, third. Let's see what else we got here. Hellebuck, no. I got – okay, I got Vasilevsky first. Vasilevsky's first. I, I, you guys all knew that anyways. We didn't need to talk about it. He's maybe the MVP of the league. He's absolutely insane. Tampa Bay wouldn't even have... Uh, seriously, Tampa Bay might not have made the playoffs last year if it wasn't for Vasilevsky. They played a lot of bad games. Uh, Connor Hellebuck, I love him, but I think you're putting him too high right now. He's been too inconsistent the last little while. Uh He's probably the more most structured goaltender using this size. I put Flurry higher. He's a Hall of Famer. He's won the cups. He's did everything. I gotta put Flurry two. Hollabuck three. I put Kemper three. Hollabuck four. There you go. That's my full forty two boys and girls. That's all I have to give. I'm gonna get down. I'm gonna do a live broadcast right now I'm going to go do a live broadcast right now uh, we're going to be doing channel surfing we're going to channel surf all the games we're all going to watch it together and the frolic will be endless sub yourself up so you can be part of it have a great day everybody okay bye